Hi everyone, I'm David Aragona, and I'm going to be taking an in-depth look at my Timeform US highlight horse on Friday at Aqueduct. Uh, it's the eighth race on Friday, it's an eight-horse field, and you've got some horses with real ability in this race uh, for the New York bred fillies going six furlongs. And before I dive into my pick in this race, uh, I just want to mention, if you've been following this series in recent weeks, you know we've been running a promotion in March where you can make a risk-free bet on my highlight horse through DRF bets, just bet $7 to win. And if the horse loses, you'll get the $7 back. Hopefully the horse wins and we have a little more luck, but uh, if you wanna bet the horse, it's a risk-free proposition. Just place the bet through DRF bets uh, on the DRF bet site at bets.drf.com or on the DRF iPhone app or through the new DRF Classic PP wager pad. Any of those places, just bet $7 to win on my highlight horse in this race, which will be the number five Palladian Bridge. I'll get to her in just a second, but we'll start by looking at the field for this race. And the horses that are likely to take the bulk of the play are the number one Bluegrass Jamboree, the number four DJ's favorite, and the number eight Pause for the Cause. We're going to take a look at all of these horses as they figure to vie for favoritism. But I want to start by taking a look at the time formula's pace projector for this race, because while the pace projector is not characterizing this pace as being particularly fast or slow, there are a number of horses that want to be forwardly placed in the early going, including the number three, A Sale, who's run some of her best races on the lead out of town. The aforementioned number four, DJ's Favorite, is a horse that does best with an aggressive ride. And the number six, Shortcakes, is another horse that does her best running when she is on the early lead. So this race could feature a pace that is least contested. I don't think they're going to be flying up front, and it's the kind of pace that's going to fall apart. But there are a number of horses that want to be up close to the pace in the early going. Looking at the contenders, I guess we'll begin with the favorite Bluegrass Jamboree, who I made the two to one favorite on the morning line. She's likely to take money based on her blowout win against Lesser Company last time when she uh, won that nominers of one allowance condition. She's stepping up to the nominers of two condition today, but she ran a speed figure last time that suggests that she can make that transition. Uh, while she only earned a 105 time from US speed figure, which is lower than the buyer number she got, which was a 95, you see that she earned a 115 final time figure for that race, and it was adjusted down 10 points to arrive at that final time from US speed figure of 105. And that's because the pace of that race was so incredibly slow, and she was right up close to that pace throughout. You see those blue color-coded pace figures for the entire running line, and that just indic indicates a pace that was very slow relative to the final time. And it was easier to achieve her fast final clocking because of those slower fractions. In addition to the pace, February 9th at Aqueduct was a day where you needed to be on the rail to have success, and Bluegrass Jamboree just rode the rail all the way down the backstretch around the far turn and only angled out in the stretch to make her late run. And uh, that was just the perfect trip in those circumstances, and I'm a little skeptical that she's going to run quite as well in this race if any adversity comes her way. So I think that she is a horse that you have to consider because she has prior efforts that also make her competitive against this field. I just feel like she might be overbet based on that last performance. Taking a look at another horse in this race, the number four DJ's favorite, or rather the number eight blue uh, pause for the cause. Uh, this is a horse that's coming out of two straight stakes races, and she actually ran well in each of those efforts. Uh, two back, she just was no match for Catherine the Wise, who exploded in the slop, uh, won by over 10 lengths. But I thought Pause for the Cause really ran well to take a shot at her that day and just kind of faded at the end of that race when she wasn't quite able to get the seven furlongs. And then last time out, February 16th, yet another day at Aqueduct where you really needed to have rail position to have your best shot. And while Pause for the Cause wasn't extremely wide, she was in the two to three path throughout her entire trip. And that just was not an ideal journey on that particular day. She's run a number of speed figures that make her very competitive against this field. And I just think if she gets back to her races over a fast track, three and four back, she's going to be pretty tough to beat at this spot. And I like the outside draw for a horse with a stalking running style like she has. So to me, she is a major contender in this race, as is the number four, DJ's favorite. I was kind of getting ahead of myself with her for a second. She earned a 114 time formula speed figure last time, and that is, I believe, the highest number out of any horse in this field. Uh, if she repeats that number, I think she's going to be tough to beat in this race. The question is, was it the sloppy track that really moved her up? And also, is that going to be a hindrance to her on Friday? Because there is some rain in the forecast on Thursday night, and we could get a sloppy track once again on Friday, and that would be to her benefit. Uh, this filly has really improved recently for Linda Rice. She was running in some cheaper races when she first came to Aqueduct. This winter, she was coming out of a $40,000 claiming win at Laurel back in uh, 
or rather, she won a forty thousand dollar funding race at Aqueduct back in December, off races at Laurel. Uh, but I thought she's really stepped forward in recent months. Uh, her last win over Big Birthday, it's worth watching that race because she was really beaten inside the eighth hole, and she was very game to come back and beat that horse. If she can repeat that race and get her favorable sloppy track once again and transfer that form to six furlongs, she's going to be a pretty tough rival for horses like Pause for the Cause and Bluegrass Jamboree, and I think she is every bit uh, of a formidable rival for those horses. I'm using all three of these horses, but the horse that I'm making my highlight horse and the one that's my top pick in this race is the number five Palladium Bridge. Just looking for a bit of a price in a race that seems somewhat wide open. Palladium Bridge might get somewhat ignored off her recent uh, losses behind horses like Pause for the Cause against Tougher Company. But if you go all the way back to her race four back, uh, where she actually beat Bluegrass Jamboree on November 16th, I think she can win with a similar performance. And if we take a look at that race in the replay, you'll see Bluegrass Jamboree in that uh, green cap making the lead on the outside. And Palladian Bridge is just kind of stuck in behind horses. She didn't really get an ideal trip this day because she had to kind of wait inside and you wanted to make an outside move over this track. It just seemed like the rail was not the place to be. She only gets outside right here at the eighth pole and she just comes through with a, a really strong finish to run down Bluegrass Jamboree over her preferred sloppy track. She's another horse that really likes uh, some moisture in the surface and she's likely to get it on Friday. I can make excuses for her last couple of starts because she was just no match for Catherine the Wise two back in that stakes race. And then last time out, while she was on the rail early in the race in the, that same spot where Pause for the Cause was second with that two to three wide trip, Palladium Bridge angled outside on the far turn and was rallying down the center of the track in the stretch. Just was not an ideal uh, trip in that race. And also, I like the rider switch back to Maddie Franco. Nothing against Sheldon Russell, but he was just not nearly as aggressive as he needed to be on a horse that runs her best races when she gets into a stalking position. And Maddie Franco, in all of his rides aboard Palladium Bridge, as he was her regular rider prior to Sheldon Russell taking the mount, he's been more aggressive with her. If he doesn't put her on the lead, he has her just a length or two off the pace. And I think such a trip is going to be beneficial to Palladium Bridge in this race. If I can get around uh, six or eight to one on her, I think that's fair. I believe I made her eight to one on the morning line. Uh, I hope she goes off at that price, but anything as low as six to one, I think is good enough against a field of this quality. So taking a shot with Palladian Bridge as my Friday time form US highlight horse. Hopefully we can make a score with this one. See you next week.